Hey, it's Kendrick, and I'm the Director of Technical Solutions at CyberTartar AI, and here I am with the rest of the team. And so today we're going to talk about some Mac OS vulnerabilities. So I'll let the rest of the team introduce themselves. I'm Daniel, Cybersecurity Consultant at CyberTartar as well. Hello, everyone. I'm Debbie, and I'm also a Cybersecurity Consultant at CyberTartar. Okay. And so, so I work with Dan, Daniel and Debbie super close every single day because at CyberTar, what's weird about us is the fact that we don't just like tell you what vulnerabilities you have. We actually like fix your vulnerabilities. Uh, not a lot of companies do that. They just kind of they'll notify you about them. They'll, they'll tell you which ones to prioritize, but they don't literally go in and fix them for you. And that's what we do. So if you need that type of service, you want cybersecurity as a service, basically turnkey type service for cybersecurity then check us out. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So we got some vulnerabilities. We're in our test lab today. And so we're gonna show you just some of the, like what, like really, really common vulnerabilities. So uh, I'm gonna prioritize this by critical. And we can also, a couple of ways we can look at this. So for those of you may, that may be new to cybersecurity, so we can go by the criticality, we can go by what's, you know, which is basically critical, high, medium, low. Uh, pretty easy to understand there. We can go by the CVSS. That's another vulnerability rating. It's common vulnerability scoring system, right? Let me know if I said that incorrectly. And this is a ratings body that kind of determines how serious the vulnerability is. But then you also have inside Tenable, their team uses some intelligence and pulls together what's called the VPR, which is the vulnerability priority rating. And this is what they're saying is the most critical. So you can look at the, based on how you look at it from here or here, here or here, we're gonna look at different vulnerabilities and figure out which is the most critical, right? So let's go ahead and start. We'll just take it here. We're gonna go by this severity uh, vulnerability here. And we'll start with, actually, I'll start with this one. 2.4.56 Apache. So team, what do y'all think about this one? We see this one a lot, right? Yes, we do. Pretty much we see it across all uh, Mac devices that, you know, um, sit underneath the 2.4. So um, the reason for this is they have a uh, HTT re request and with a smuggling attack. So, and that means configurations are affected when a mod proxy is enabled along with some form of rewrite rule or proxy pass match in which a non-specific pattern matches some portion of the user supplied request target, which is your URL data and is inserted into the proxy request targeting using variable substitutions. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna call it Debbie Alice because the thing is, I, I'm sitting there and I know what the vulnerability is. And honestly, when I look at this, there's no way that I'm gonna like, that most people are gonna read this and really understand what this is. So that's one of the things that we do, right? We gotta break this down, right, Debbie? So so let's let's make this, let's make this in some, some that, so that everybody can understand it, right? So the, the way I interpret this is, and you tell me if I go off wrong, but see, the thing is, on first of all, on Mac OS devices, right? The Apache web server, there is a web server which allows you to serve a web page that's enabled on the Mac OS devices. However, it is, I mean, that it can be enabled on the Mac OS devices, but it's disabled by default. And so since it's default, that's one way that's already remediated the vulnerability. So even though it shows up on vulnerability scans, it's already mitigated because it's di disabled by default. The second thing is what David was mentioning about the mod proxy configuration. So within, if you have Apache server enabled and you have this mod proxy enabled with a certain configuration that has rewrite rules or proxy match uh, enabled, uh, or it has rewrite rules and proxy match in the configuration, then it's exploitable. So you gotta have two factors. So you gotta have mod proxy configurations, you gotta, well, you gotta have enabled and you've gotta have a rewrite rule and proxy or proxy match also configured. If that's the case, then this will be vulnerable. But okay, so based on this, most of these, we kind of wanna just basically have to choose to go into actions, right? And we'll recast or we'll accept the risk. And so for this one, you know, it's gonna be fixed when uh, Apple releases the next update, right? So a lot of times we'll come in here and we're gonna go ahead and we'll maybe accept the risk for three months or something like that because we're waiting for a new Mac OS updates because they will essentially, every few uh, Mac OS updates, they fix the version of the Apache web server that's on it, which remediates the vulnerability. And then Tenable proceeds to release a new vulnerability immediately that says, okay, well, the next version. 
So it's like this, it's like this continuous cycle. But if you don't study these and you don't kind of pay attention to these vulnerabilities, you, you, you definitely will think this is something and you go through a lot of work trying to remediate something that's already remediated. So any other any other uh, comments or anything else you want to add to this before we go into the next vulnerability? Yes. Yeah, so like technically, it typically takes about a month. So the first time that it was reported to any security team, that happened February 2nd of 2023. And so an update was released on March 7th. So that was about a month and a couple of days. So and that's anything affecting anything less or equal to the 2.4.55. Okay. And so let's go ahead and jump into the next one. So, and you notice there's a very little difference between this. So we just addressed the 2.4.56 vulnerability, right? That's available, right? Or that's uh, applicable to Mac OS devices. But here's another one. It's 2.4.55. And what you'll find is that what Tenable can do is that if you have a vulnerability and say, for instance, I got a really old version of anything. It'll show all the vulnerabilities all the way up into the current version that's not vulnerable. Okay, so it's saying basically, so if we just looked at this one without looking at this comprehensively, we will upgrade or we will get the software update that updates our Apache server to 2.4.55. And then immediately we'll still have to do another upgrade to 2.4.56. So what we do with Cybertar is we try to kind of understand like what is the solution for the entire vulnerability? So we don't want to have to like go in and just like upgrade a million times if we can just get the latest version of the software and that remediates 15, 20, sometimes 30 or 40 vulnerabilities and even more. Sometimes there could be hundreds of vulnerabilities that are remediated because you go to the latest version and Tenable is going to show you all the vulnerable versions all, all the way up into the version that is actually fixed. So for this one, you're going to look at this one. And so this is the same thing. If you are anything as far as the macOS device, you have a host, remote host is running the Apache server that's prior to 2.4.55. It's affected by these vulnerabilities. It says a carefully crafted uh, if request header, a carefully crafted if, if request header can cause memory read, write, or a single zero byte in pool heap memory location beyond the header value sent. All this stuff, right? So it gets through all this stuff. You can read this. So for us, when we look at this, like this probably doesn't mean a lot to somebody except for a very few specialized group of people. But it also makes it susceptible to what's called an HTTP request smuggling attack. OK, and so what we can do is we can look here and we go to Port Swigger, which may, actually makes a Burp Suite, which is a really amazing tool for for a red team or penetration testers, etc. And if you go down here, it says the HTTP request smuggling. It's a technique for interfering with the way a web suite processes sequence of HTTP requests that are received from one or more users. Request smuggling vulnerabilities are often critical in nature, allowing the attacker to bypass security control. This is what you need to condense it down to. Like a lot of times the techno babble is good, but it allows an attacker to bypass the security controls, gain unauthorized access to sensitive data, and directly compromise application users. So I don't care what language you speak, right? tech or non-tech you can understand this much so this is what's at risk and so for this vulnerability y'all want to chime in as far as kind of what the remediation i'll show the output here too all right and see they they, they new to the youtube thing so they got no you can't have long pauses in youtube videos <laughs> you cannot do that yeah this is definitely my first time on video that's why i'm like Kind of killed it, but hey, it's a learning process, right? Yeah, I know how to yeah, do the back end yeah. process, but now right. it's getting in front of everybody and being able to speak correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so no, definitely, um, I do see a couple more things with um, with this vulnerability versus the first one that we spoke about. There's three okay. things that it that that it affects, and that it has a uh, three CVEs tied to it. With that being said, um, some of these vulnerabilities took six months before Apple came up with a remediation, right? For Apache, so for the server. So not all of them are created equal. Some stay on there longer than others, but they're just as important to, to get them remediated as soon as possible. Now, I can tell you one thing I'll add to here, like you'll see this, this vulnerability can also show up with other versions of Apache that are affected. So what we're looking for is we're taking a number of factors. When we see this, this path, like this is where the, the, the web server is located. 
When we see this, at this point, we recognize this as the default location of the Apache server. This is the one I told that's already disabled. Same with the other vulnerabilities we looked at before. The HTTP, the Apache server is disabled by default. And when I see this path, that lets me know, okay, this is a Mac OS device. This is a default location. This is already pretty much mitigated. And we're just waiting for Apple to release a new operating system update that's going to include a fix for this version of Apache. However, if we look here and we see that this vulnerability, this path is different, then perhaps somebody has actually installed a vulnerable version of Apache on their machines. And we will have to remediate and walk through getting work through getting them to upgrade or upgrading if it's something that we can do via script. Okay. So anything else, Daniel? Daniel's very quiet. Daniel's just spectating today. <laughs> hey, Debbie's doing such a great job. I didn't want to break her flow. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, then, you know, I don't want to hold you back. I know you're fighting to get in here. So, all right. And so let's go ahead and let's look at another one and same thing. And, you know, we'll look at a little bit more detail, but this is also something that we see already. Like a lot of times I'm going to put it on the bottom of the screen there. And this is going to be a Mac OS uh, X less than 11.7.6. So Daniel, you got to take this one, man. So we're gonna force, we're gonna force the the rookie on the team to take it. So what you got? No worries, no worries. So this is a an OS. This is an OS upgrade for for Mac. And basically, what this is telling you that you need to upgrade to the latest version of the OS for Mac because there are a lot of vulnerabilities that are attached directly to the, the operating system. And it's one of the like Kendra likes to call the low hanging fruit. It's very critical because a lot of you know security patches come with those OS and people you know tend to think that I'll, I'll get to when I get to it. it's something that you would you definitely want to stay on top of and not only that to piggyback off of the last um vulnerability we looked at like Kendrick and Debbie both said when you do this it, a lot of times it will patch that Apache uh, vulnerability that we looked at right before this so that's why it's so important to stay on top of your OS upgrades yeah so what, what you're essentially looking at here is you know, I got this Mac in there the reason I got this vulnerable version which is on Mac OS Big Sur it's because uh, we're working through some scripts because we're trying to like do some clean operating system upgrades sometimes. So technically we're not supposed to do OS upgrades because that can cause a lot of issues, but I still like to have a script for everything. And so we're working, we want to have a machine in the lab where we can actually test using a scripted upgrade of the operating system and stuff like that. So anyway, you know, you can do like a software update, uh, space tag, which is the minus sign, minus L, and you can list all the available software updates on your machine. And then you can also use that same sequence to be able to force upgrade. So what we want to do is we want to like using scripts, basically upgrade this machine, not touching anything on the machine itself, all through script and stuff like that. So that's why we got this in here as a vulnerable version. But really the solution to this is we want to get this to what? 13.2.1? Is that right? Or are we on 13.3.1? 13.3.1, okay. Are you, are you sure 13.3.1? I'm gonna ask for a sanity check on that. The team okay. check. Because <laughs> I know we got 13.3, but I didn't realize we were 13.3.1 yet. Check. I'm pretty sure. I know yeah, a new see. one just came out this week. Yeah. So. Okay. I'll let y'all check that. We'll let me know if it's 13. But the thing is, you always want to keep your Mac OS devices on the latest operating system version. So, unless for some reason you know that's going to impact a particular program on your device. But this vulnerability, once again, you can see this. And, and honestly, when we upload, if we follow this and we don't kind of pay attention to the to the root cause of the vulnerability, then you essentially just basically upgrade to 11.7.6, you'll rescan it and you're gonna say, oh, it's gonna say upgrade to 12, upgrade 12.1, 12.2, 13, 13.1. So you're gonna like be doing this over and over again. But we know because we see this at scale on thousands and thousands of machines, that the solution is you go to 13.2.1 and that's gonna kill 40, 50, 100 different vulnerabilities because it's gonna have vulnerabilities for every operating system version all the way up into the fixed one. And so that's pretty much the solution. So, and for this vulnerability right there, there's exactly what it does. Remote host is running an older version and therefore it's affected by the vulnerability. And so a lot of times you can go and you read the detail. I'm not a programmer, so a lot of the stuff I don't necessarily always have to understand like the details of every in aspect of a vulnerability, but as long as I can get the gist and understand what, how I do to what, what I need to do to mitigate this, you know, and basically with, within some reason have a fundamental understanding of what it is, then a lot of times, you know, you can kind of remediate these. And I'm just saying this for other people who are in the field who want to remediate vulnerabilities, even if you want to fix these on your home machine, 
you know, a lot of times don't get caught up in the super technical aspect, but also focus on what the description is saying do, you know? And so that's why I like tenable products like this, because it does take us here and we can kind of look at the details and figure out exactly what to do without having to literally like be, you know, dealing with like assembly code or some crazy thing like that. So that being the case, uh, anything else y'all want to share as far as kind of with the vulnerabilities, anything notable this week that we've encountered um, within the environments that you were working on? Yes, funny thing that you mentioned that because today I encountered something new that had never happened to, I've never seen before. So basically we had a member where it said her system was up to date, software was the latest, but we knew that it wasn't because we know that she was at least, you know, two behind. So I told her to go on the terminal and just like you were just saying, yeah, I'm go software update dash L to list all updates available. And that brought up the, the new update. So there was no way for her to actually deploy that update using the system preferences and software update. So we had to do it from the terminal. So I just had her do the software update dash install and then the name that came up uh, when from the list, which was the 13.3.3, I believe, um, OS. And then another thing also that we can implement too while we're doing that is we could also um, do a software update install. And then if you put the dash A after the dash I for the install, that'll install all available updates to that Mac OS system. Okay. I should put a banner up for that one. So software update space I. minus mm -hmm. A, you said minus A, space minus I, space minus L, right? Yep. So okay, cool. So I'm not saying don't and don't not all at the same time. <laughs> somebody somebody <laughs> might put they might you either either or okay mm -hmm. so either or any of those so yeah. well let's get anything else daniel anything for you anything notable before we jump uh, off today i did check it is 13.3.1 that was released it is 30 okay, it is. okay mm -hmm. good deal good i didn't send the so. check for you okay so so that means so from us that means you're going to always already start shifting making sure that all of our members get to 13.3.1 uh at this point because once again you know you got a chance you have to figure out a lot of times if it's uh Sometimes it can be a feature update from Mac or Windows. So they will have what's called feature updates where they add new functionality, fix bugs. But then a lot of times there's security updates. And so we always have to evaluate to figure out which we're dealing with. But that being the case, once again, if you need cybersecurity services, hey, you don't have staff and everything like that. And for affordable prices, don't forget to check us out at Savitar.ai. You can literally go sign up and automatically get vulnerability scans started without anybody touching it. So completely signed up via e-commerce and start getting vulnerability scanned and also purchase cybersecurity services and we'll take care of you. We'll get your vulnerabilities remediated. So that being the case, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the CyberTar channel.